for B'nai B'rith Canada and one of the leading Canadian authorities on anti-Semitism and a key architect of this conference. Professor Alain Goldschlager, conference chair, distinguished scholars and friends. It would have been inconceivable for my parents of blessed memory, survivors of the Vilna Ghetto, Dachau, and Auschwitz, and numerous Arbeitslagers, work camps, to conceive that one day their son would be opening a conference of this magnitude in which B'nai B'rith Canada and the government are joint sponsors. My parents were proud Canadians and appreciated the opportunities that Canada afforded new immigrants, but they never would have envisioned that a government of this country would actually apologize for the misdeeds of those in power when the St. Louis was turned away from our shores. Nor could they have imagined that the government would not merely apologize, but would indeed engage in active educational programs to ensure that future tra tragedies are avoided. Mr. Minister, the timing of this conference is indeed critical. We are now again in an age of rising anti-Semitism, domestically and internationally. We are in an age in which, once again, my parents could not have conceived that there would be those that actively deny the Holocaust, nor would they have dreamt that Canadian universities would be the hotbeds of anti-Semitism in the guise of anti-Zionism and anti-Israel, and that Jewish students would be harassed in the hallways and in the lecture halls as the administration chooses to look the other way. Anti-Semitism is now felt in the boardrooms of this country and on the street. We are living in new and troubling times when the lessons of the past are critical, if we are to have a bright future. We praise our government for the initiatives that you have taken, including leading the world in boycotting of Durban II. Mr. Minister, your government has called Israel a friend and ally. You have broken the traditional Canadian mold by acknowledging Israel as an ally. The Canadian Jewish community with B'nai B'rith Canada in the forefront as a country's senior Jewish organization is proud to call this government both a friend and ally. When it comes to outreach and specifically providing security for the Jewish community and helping to educate about the wrongdoings of the past and working with us to build a better future, your government has been a trailblazer. Mr. Minister, you are one of the outstanding senior ministers of the cabinet. You are a minister that made outreach to the ethnic communities of this country, not only your professional responsibility, but indeed your personal passion. From those from overseas, who might not be fully informed of your illustrious career, let me share just a few facts. Jason Kenney was appointed Minister of Citizenship, Immigration, and Multiculturalism on October 30th, 2008. He was first elected to the House of Commons in 1997 and has been re-elected four times, most recently with a 73% of the vote. He was appointed Parliamentary Secretary to the Prime Minister in 2006 and Secretary of State for Multiculturalism and Canadian Identity in 2007. Mr. Kenny was born in Ontario and raised in Saskatchewan, where he graduated from Notre Dame College. He did undergraduate studies in philosophy at St. Ignatius Institute of University in San Francisco. Mr. Kenny is a former chair of the House of Commons Subcommittee on International Human Rights. He served in a variety of positions in opposition, including finance critic and deputy house leader. Prior to seeking election, Mr. Kenny served as president and chief executive officer of the Canadian Taxpayers Federation. Let me now personally state that the Honorable Jason Kenny is the personification of understanding, sensitivity, and friendship. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Jason Kenny 
Minister of Citizenship, Immigration and Multiculturalism. Thank you very, very much for that, uh, that, that too kind welcome, Frank, and congratulations to you and all of the team who have helped to make today possible. On behalf of our government and Prime Minister Stephen Harper, I welcome each and every one of you, particularly our, our, the survivors who are here and particularly our international delegates. I would like to uh, thank our partners, the United States Department of State, the, the, French, Foreign Ministry of, uh, the French Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the United States Holocaust Museum, and the Memorial de la Shoah. Au nom du gouvernement du Canada et du Premier ministre, je vous souhaite la bienvenue et je remercie nos partenaires, le département d'État des États-Unis, le ministère des Affaires étrangères de la France, le musée de la Holocaust des États-Unis, et le Memorial de la Shoah. I would especially like to thank our Canadian partners and co-hosts, Bene Brith, for all of their hard, hard work in making this happen. Cette conférence représente l'aboutissement de plus de deux années de travail au Canada dans le cadre de nos efforts en vue d'adhérer au groupe de travail pour la coopération internationale en matière de, de sensibilisation, de commémoration et de recherche au sujet de l'Holocauste. It, uh, it was also the result of decades of dedicated efforts by scholars, educators, Holocaust survivors, and public institutions, and it is a testament to the wealth of Holocaust knowledge we have in Canada and around the world. I would like in particular, I think, you know, conferences like this are essential, and the implication, the involvement of government is essential. But ultimately, ultimately, if we are to, as a society, to learn the lessons of the past, to avoid repeating the connection between anti-Semitism and anti-Semitic violence, we, this must be a learning of the entire, entire civil society. It's something the government cannot do of in, its, in and of itself. That's why the involvement of organizations like B'nai B'rith is so important. But I would like to single out the leadership of non-Jewish Canadians in bringing to public attention for the first time in a significant and popular way the tragedy of the St. Louis incident uh, in Canada. And that, in, that is, uh, I, re I refer to the leadership of the Reverend David Damien and his ministry, Watchmen for the Nations, which in the year 2000, nine years ago, felt a calling to, on behalf of Christian Canadians, apologize to Jewish Canadians and to the survivors of the St. Louis for the anti-Semitism which underscored Canada's rejection of Jewish refugees before and during the Second World War. And in the year 2000, Reverend Damien and his ministry went across the country uh, and to educate Canadians, to seek forgiveness from the Jewish people, and sponsored a conference in Ottawa in the year 2000 where they brought together survivors and, and others to acknowledge this terrible moment in Canada's history. And I want to thank uh, Reverend Damien, who is here with us, for his leadership in bringing to public consciousness the issue of the St. Louis. Thank you very much, David. Ladies and gentlemen, Prime Minister Harper's government is deeply committed to Holocaust education, research, and commemoration, a fact that I think was in part recognized last night when he received the Simon Wiesenthal International Leadership Award from the Simon Wiesenthal Center. This award recognizes his effort and his leadership to deal with the his education of the historical reality of the Holocaust, but also to confront modern manifestations of anti-Semitism. This year marks the 70th anniversary of the voyage of the St. Louis. As we know, it sailed from Europe in 1939, but was not allowed to land at its original destination of Cuba. Although a group of prominent members of Canadian society lobbied the Canadian government, the St. Louis was unable to find refuge on the trip to protect its passengers from persecution by the Nazi regime. Now the Canadians here will know that ex exactly what form the response of the government of Canada, the Dominion government at the time took.